Hello, I'm Natalie and in this video I'm going to give a brief discussion of Netflix's new show Kaleidoscope. I'm going to give a brief overview of my thoughts of the show and also a discussion on the relationship between Bob and Judy Goodwin. This video won't contain spoilers as such as I'll just be discussing the relationship, I won't be discussing any major plot points. What's cool about Kaleidoscope is that it's a limited series that spits out episodes in a random order. So at the beginning of the show you get a little introduction and at the very end of the series you will watch the episode called White. So all the episodes are given colors rather than names or numbers um, so that when they're spit out randomly it doesn't make any difference. First a brief review. It's an interesting concept but I don't think it worked out so well. I think there was a fair bit of exposition in each episode because if it was your first episode you would need to know who was who and kind of a general gist of what's happening. So I think the time spent on that in each episode makes it drag on a little bit. I also felt that there was a lack of tension and conflict being built up across the series because you already maybe had seen the outcome of what had happened in a previous episode and you were just kind of piecing together the you know step by step what actually happened in that moment but you already knew the outcome so it kind of took away the satisfaction of seeing those moments unfold. This is especially obvious because you've, you see episodes that are set after the heist takes place before you actually see the heist episode which is the final episode. Lots of film and television shows set in this heist genre will have the final sequence be the reveal of the heist with a few time jumps or little tricks to keep the audience interested but I felt like with Kaleidoscope there were two 40 minute episodes of essentially denouement so it kind of felt like there wasn't anything left to keep watching if that makes sense. Secondly and this is the real issue I had with the show is the relationship between Bob and Judy Goodwin. Bob is an idiot. He's a puffed up loud mouthed petty thief safe cracker full of bravado who doesn't listen to anyone. Judy on the other hand is a chemistry genius. She's emotionally and socially intelligent. She's a genius as I already mentioned. She can whip up whatever explosive or chemistry type item the team may need. She's tough, she's unafraid and she's confident. She's got it all. It's mind boggling that Bob and Judy are together and married and for some reason Judy shows Bob fierce loyalty when his integrity is questioned or challenged. I wish that the show had gone back and shown why these two were together or what it is about Bob that made him worthy of Judy's loyalty but obviously it doesn't so I can presume nothing happened to make him worthy. He's extremely volatile and prone to outbursts. He's emotionally stunted, he's not that intelligent he's controlling and he's not trustworthy either. If Bob gets slightly mocked or offended he lets out his anger through intimidation and fists. Judy flies to his side soothing and managing his emotions which usually means redirecting his anger into sex which is a major red flag. By all accounts Judy should be running very far away from him but for no apparent reason she stays loyal to him, defending him when other members of the heist question his irrational behavior. It's funny because what we learn about Judy's past is that she's the daughter of some kind of chemistry genius professor, so we presume she's had a happy and safe upbringing, we presume she's well educated based on her skills and had some kind of close relationship with her father, so there's no real explanation given for why Judy would succumb to a abusive relationship. Because that's what it is, Judy must be suffering some kind of emotional abuse or at least is silencing her inner voice. One example of this is when they are being recruited or rather Judy is being recruited and Bob pushes his way into the meeting and basically demands to be part of the team too. If they're going to take Judy they have to have him as well, they can't have Judy without him. Look we're a package deal me and the wife are here yeah? But you're in luck, safe so I'm on things, so tell him babe. He's very good. He doesn't allow Judy to have much independence and he doesn't really allow her to make her own choices or have her own jobs away from him. There are lots of moments in this show where you can see Judy kind of keeping quiet when Bob is being a loud mouth or being brash or being over the top or violent or rude. She has the kind of expression of like an embarrassed mum whose toddler is doing something wild and out of control. 
In Bob's defense, there is one moment that I can think of where he is vulnerable to Judy and kind of shares his fear, but then that's quickly covered up and masked and pushed down and he reverts back to his old self. I suspect the writers wanted to create conflict within the heist team, so they decided to create this annoying Bob character who nobody likes. He's a stereotypical, like, gets the job done but is really inappropriate and annoying type of character. But to create him at the expense of Judy's integrity as a female character is quite frankly gross. They made Judy loyal to Bob so that the team would have to keep him around and the team wouldn't succeed without Judy's expertise. So they kind of have to accept him in order to get her. At the same time, Judy's trapped because she wouldn't be allowed in the team without him letting her. Of course, patriarchal hierarchy is nothing new, and although Judy is the more important member of the team, she is a woman. Therefore, Bob has to have power over her in order to remain the alpha. Bob's physical stature and his reliance on intimidation and violence is what keeps him in that position. It's also to a degree what keeps him in the team as well, because with criminal activity there is a general acceptance that there may be times when you have to use violence in order to keep from being caught or to get the job done. While the team dislikes Bob, they know he is also a worthwhile asset in that sense because then they know that he will not be afraid to step in and take violent action if that's what's required. They accept his irrational outbursts and implicitly accept what he is doing to Judy because they may benefit from it at some point. If you're still not convinced that this is an abusive dynamic, then let me flip the script. Imagine Bob was the genius chemistry person and Judy was the stupid but controlling wife. It doesn't really work because women who are seen as stupid or dumb are unable to be controlling and manipulative at the same time. Even saying something like controlling idiot wife feels weird. If we link this to our real world, it's scary because statistically women who are suffering from coercive control in their relationships are more likely to be harmed physically by their partners. I'll share a link to this below, but there is a bulletin titled Experiences of Coercive Control Among Australian Women that says, one in two women who had experienced coercive control also reported physical violence in the three months prior to the survey. Among women who experienced coercive control, one in three reported sexual violence, and 26% had experienced both physical and sexual violence. This means that most women who experienced coercive control in the three months prior to the survey also experienced physical and or sexual violence. It's not a stretch of the imagination to say that looking at Judy and Bob's dynamic, you can see elements of coercive control happening and also how that could potentially lead to sexual or physical violence in her case. The report also said that among 112 incidents of intimate partner homicide that occurred between June 2000 and July 2019, coercive controlling behavior was a feature of the relationship between couples involved in all but one case. So out of 112 women who were murdered by their partners, 111 of them experienced coercive control in the lead up to their murder. The reason I'm touching on these statistics is just to reinforce the idea that what we may see on TV, what we may see in the media does have some influence on how people act in the real world. If we watch Kaleidoscope and we see Bob behaving the way he does to Judy, we might think, oh, that's okay, that's just what it's like to be married. And that's obviously not how it should be. In Kaleidoscope, we don't see Bob physically or verbally abusing Judy directly. But my point is that showing this kind of behavior on TV is how it gets normalized and widely accepted. It kind of makes it seem like it's romantic. He's a huge, angry, toxic man, but he's calmed by Judy. Their passionate love is something good because it helps him. She is obviously the woman who saves him. The Fifty Shades of Grey narrative where a woman meets a man and saves him or can change him is really damaging. And it actually 
hardly ever happens. The reality is that women get abused or killed, like in the statistics I just mentioned. It's a shame that such a huge show didn't recognise the dangerous tropes that it was perpetuating, and that stories of women being abused in plain sight, without any of the abuse being the focus of a single conversation in the whole series, is acceptable. I don't want to spoil anything, but I would even argue that what happens with Bob and Judy in the final white episode isn't really a resolution of this issue especially when we see what happens in the months after the heist. If anything, I would say what we see in the months after the heist is reinforcing the statistics above. I'm not saying that you can't make things that include storylines of abuse, but I think you have to at least recognize it and call it out. At least acknowledge that what's happening to Judy is not right. At least tell people that this behavior is not okay and that it's not a good example of what a relationship should be. I really enjoyed Kaleidoscope, but I hate that this dynamic exists. And in my searching for any comment about it or any reviews that mention it, I didn't find a single one at the time of recording this video. The fact that so many people review this show and don't mention the awful way Bob treats Judy is an indication to me that this is a broader epidemic of silencing or ignoring abusive relationships that are happening in the media. If you got something out of this video, please leave me a comment, a thumbs up, or you could subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.